Hey, good morning. Oh, man, I've totally been keeping myself so busy that I haven't made time to actually come and do these anymore lately. Um, so, getting back in the spirit of it all, um, I totally... I, I have Christ's high priestly prayer laid on me this morning. I started in Deuteronomy 31 and then ended up here somehow. So, um, what did Christ mean with his final prayer for his disciples and those who took up the cross after him and after he had left? What he asked was actually very, very important. Gosh, you stupid flies. What's up with that today? Um, what he, what he asked for himself, but what he asked for us after him was very important. And I think a lot of people miss this, or at least it's not actually spoken in the church because God forbid normally if we know our power and take it from the priest or the pastor or whoever from the leader if we take our power from the leader then they lose so it's always a constant battle of balance keeping them in the pew and keeping them fed we're just gonna worry about keeping y'all fed I don't care about the damn pews I don't care how many people show up I don't care how many people leave this is about the father and who it's supposed to be meant for this isn't about me at all you know I've come to realize that I have a lot of pride and a lot of ego and man totally shedding that is an immense job to say the least um, but hey man I'm still here in this world between worlds so hey can't be that bad can't be that bad at all there's a lot of suffering out there right now and I'm just glad to be in my bubble grateful I hope everybody else is doing well, too. And if you need prayer, please comment below. I'm more than happy to pray for anyone and for everything. Um, let's get to it. Let's get to it. And so it's John 17. Father, the hour has come. Glorify the Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. There has been many, many ascended masters that have come. Five that I know of, for sure. Krishna, Buddha, Christ, and there's two others, um, Serapis, and, uh, gosh, I can't remember the last one right now. I'm just not being, I'm just not able to call it to remembrance. I'm totally stuck on this, so. Um, the Elohim is the original translation for the name of God in Genesis 1, 1. So, Elohim, Eloa, is a singular divine being. Elohim, the I am, the im on the end of it, makes any word plural in the Hebrew language. So, the Elohim, plural gods, came and created man. So, the true God would be the true Elohim and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. We are all expressions of the divine being running around in this world. We are not the divine being singularly. We are just an expression of that divine being. Together, we are the divine being. Together, collectively, we are all the expressions of the divine that the divine chose to express himself to get to know himself here in this world. So, what happens is, as we interact with one another and the divine interacts with himself and learns about each person as our psychological man it's it's crazy it's crazy it really is gosh i'm gonna have to actually break that down so that everybody can understand that how the divine interacts with himself it's like having a conversation with himself but without being himself 
if you clone yourself, you know what you're already going to ask. You already know what you're going to reply. There's no fun in that. There's no learning. There's no gain. There's no growth. So, back to this. Back to this. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I, am, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest, gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me them, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. There are of him. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me. For they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them I is lost. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. I'm going to be doing a teaching on that. I'm, well, the Father's going to be doing a teaching. I'm just going to be a vessel for it. Um, on the betrayal of Christ and how Christ actually felt about Judas. And how Judas actually felt about Christ. They, it was a plan. There was a plan. I don't believe that Christ forsook him. I do believe that Judas, like everyone else, was given another chance in another life to move beyond his destiny, to move beyond the betrayal. Though to betray the Son of Man for 30 pieces of silver, it'll always be 30 pieces of silver, and it'll always be betrayal that leads to the downfall of the Son of Man and the Son of God. Um, I don't believe that Judas and Christ actually, you know, went separate ways, except for, you know, the Satan had possessed his body, which we have two fathers, you know, so the Satan possessed his body and went and did the work. He was only a vessel for it. He was hijacked. Who's really at fault? But being the vessel... We are in charge of this vessel, and we are held responsible for the energies that we allow to flow through. And Judas had to pay the price for allowing that kind of energy to work through him. So in the next life, you know, well, Judas hung himself on a piece of land that he had bought with the money because he couldn't give the money back. So, you would have to understand what possession is and how uh, spirits operate on the body, in the body, and around the body. So, Judas wasn't... We're just going to do this today, I guess. <laughs> so, Judas wasn't really responsible for what happened to Christ. That was supposed to happen. But, we are responsible for our choices, and we suffer accordingly. If you haven't noticed that, look at your own life. We suffer for our own choices. Even though it's destined, it's played out for us to grow, karma, all that dharma, everything. It's a trip. Even though Christ said it would be been better for him not to have been born, He's still worried about him. He still loved him. He, he never let him go. He just he knew that he knew that it had to be done. Let's move on now. Let's move on. And now come to come I to thee, and these things I spake in the world, 
that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest taketh them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they, shall, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved me, and hast loved them, as thou hast loved me. Father, I, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be within them. Sorry, I got alarms set for keeping me on, on track for work and stuff in the mornings. Um, man, this is so powerful, it's so powerful, the words that he speaks. You are the Christ in this world, if you choose to be. You are the devil in this world, if you so choose, if you so choose to be. Or the son of perdition. Which which apostle are you? I think it's time for the hard questions. Me, I know that I am every apostle, even Judas. I am Christ, I am the divine being, and I am also the devil and the son of perdition. I'm a freaking monster. And anybody who knows me knows that that's the truth. Sometimes blind, half deaf, can't speak, can't feel. But I, I try to move past my ego and I always ask for his will to be done above my own. Even though sometimes I can barely walk, barely see, barely hear, deaf, dumb, and mute. Shoot. Send me, I'll do it, since no one else will. If not me, then who? If not now, then when? Oh, man. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. We're all sinners. We all fall short of the glory. Are you going to rise up above that? Above that shortcoming? You know, Jesus, mercy, man. If you never rise above it, then you'll never even know the great joy that actually is there. Oh, no, I think that's it. They're pulling away, so... I'm going to just leave it at that and shoot whatever message is conveyed. Then, you know, it was meant to be. Bless you all. Love and light. Man. Wake up. Call yourself home. Because, damn, this world is totally needing it. But, 
hey, you know, I see the purpose for the way this world is, actually. If you think about it, all the tests and trials, the suffering, it's actually what makes us who we are. The joy never made me anything good. It just made me proud and arrogant. It's the suffering that humbled me. What's humbling you? And maybe you should yield. Maybe you should stop fighting. Or maybe you're fighting the good fight. And shoot, maybe you should keep fighting. I don't know, I'm interested in what everybody's, where everyone's at and what everybody's, you know, up to in their spiritual walk. And uh, if I can help in any way, you know, please always comment below or, you know, shoot. I'm sure most of the people that are subscribers on my channel are totally have my phone number in some way or my email. So, you know, go ahead, give me a, shoot me a message. Happy to hear from everyone and happy to help everybody where they are. I'm sorry, that's all I can do at this point, is help you where you're at. I find you can only help yourself. I can't help you. I can give you the tools to help yourself, but you must do it. Pick up your cross and follow after me if you want what I have. I could say right now people quit trying to curse me and give me the damn evil eye because you desire what I have. You work iniquity to achieve vanity. If you desire what I have, go get it for yourself. I suffered for what I have. What have you suffered for? And is it worth it? That's the question. Is the suffering worth it? Because suffering is only worth one thing in this world. And unless you find it, you know, what's the suffering worth? Nothing, because you're coming back next life to do it all over again. I mean, if you don't pass the test that you set to pass, you have to do it over. Pass your tests. Or, or if you do worse, you end up with more lessons the next life plus the lessons that you had. Trust me, I know. I've done it. We've all done it. We just don't remember it. Wait till you remember it. Wait till you start remembering. Wait till... Uh, there's a jubilee here. Just like, just like the seven years and the 49 years. It's about the returns. It's about the returns of the spiritual being within. It's about timing. It's about divine timing. No, I, I made the right choices for years on end and seen no result. I seen only curses and few blessings to keep me going forward. So, you know, just know that, man, I look back and I see at least a six year journey before I received divine union. What does that mean? It means that if you make this choice now, you will probably see six years before you see the seventh year and before you receive power from on high. Just remember that. So, you know, the road is long. The days are long and the years are short though. So keep pushing forward. Granite shoot, I'm still coming from coming from a camper trailer in my parents' backyard, but you know what? I'm happier now than I ever was in a house with everyone around me, with everything I ever had. Ten times happier now. And I'd give the rest away too. I hope you guys get it as well. If you need any help along your journey, I'm always here for you. Well, I'll always be the vessel. But I know the divine is here for you. Stay strong. You guys love and light.